Let's nail it this time. Let's nail it. Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. What I have for you today is another video in my Corona Apocalypse series, in which I'm just making a bunch of videos around my apartment because there really isn't much else for me to do when I'm spending a lot of time at home during the pandemic of the century. So welcome back to my uh, kitchen studio. I haven't made a video here in a while. And the subject matter of today's video, it's gonna be another one of my gear closet sessions in which I discuss more topical or philosophical ideas about hiking and backpacking. And the specific topic is why I don't really like to use smart water bottles and other lightweight, but not quite ultralight hydration solutions on the trail. Yeah, so this video, it might irk some of the ultralight disciples out there who strictly use smart water bottles and really don't want to use anything else. But I found for my situation, I like to use something a little different. But first, what I like to get into is the advantages of smart water bottles, because these things do have some advantages. The first is this shape, and this shape is great <laughs> for fitting uh, even two water bottles into one backpack pocket. And so you could carry two water bottles per pocket and carry four pockets, four bottles in your side pockets for a gallon water capacity that comes in at under five ounces. And I'll tell you what, that uh, weight to capacity deal, I like that. That's a pretty good weight to capacity, uh, capacity ratio. That's the first advantage of them. The second of them, second is definitely the weight. These things come in, this particular bottle weighs 1.1 ounces on my scale. And some of the, the larger bottles weigh a little bit more, but that's a pretty good weight for a bottle. And as I said, you can get a gallon under five ounces. As compared to something like this Nalgene bottle, this thing weighs 3.75 ounces, and this is one of your lighter weight Nalgenes. So three of these for one of these, that's a pretty good deal. But as I said, I don't really like to use these on the trail. One of the reasons is how I got my start with outdoor activities. See, when I first got into hiking and outdoors, I couldn't get enough. So I even got jobs in the outdoors. I didn't just like to go on backpacking trips, go on day hikes. I got a job in the outdoors so I could spend as much time as possible. And part of those jobs would require me to, to you know, I, I would build hiking trails or work on chainsaw crews. And what that requires is a lot of movement throughout the day, going up and down the trail or up and down the mountain or through the forest or whatever. Your gear gets a lot of wear and tear. So you're gonna be focused on durable gear first and foremost, as opposed to lightweight gear. And that really also required durable gear for hydration. So what I would use is, first when I started out, like a lot of people, I just carry a bunch of Nalgene bottles. I carry three or four of these things, you know? And eventually I figured out that's kind of stupid because that's a lot of weight and the shape of them takes a lot of space in your backpack. So eventually I started carrying a nice three liter Camelback or hydration bladder that would, uh, you know, be a pretty good lightweight solution based on what I knew at the time, uh, and pretty convenient because you just, you know, drink out a little tube, you know, <laughs> very convenient. Over the years on the trail, I noticed people start to use these smart water bottles a lot more. And so I decided to give them a try, but I can never get fully convinced because my main concern was just durability. You know, my days doing, doing trail work and outdoor work, you'd really want something, your gear, you want it to be durable. And these smart water bottles, um, I'm, I'm sure some through hiker will tell me I use, they use the same smart water bottles through their whole Appalachian Trail or Pacific Crest Trail hike, uh, and, and that's great. Uh, but I, I'm just concerned about durability because you put it on a, a, a rock or a, or a stick or rub it against the wrong tree, you know, it might be susceptible to breaking. And with this knife, I can just easily, easily poke holes in it with this knife. And <clears throat> that can simulate setting it down hard on on a rock or a stick on the ground. So I just don't want to have to be out there and be worried about that. And also these caps can be pretty fragile compared to compared to what you get in an algae bottle or or the, uh, the the caps that come on these water bladders. So that was one of my concerns. Another concern was the type of plastics used. These use number one plastic PET or PETE plastic and and that is meant to be really a single-use plastic, not the most durable, not the most um, durable to UV degradation as well and abrasion. So I prefer to use a more durable plastic like 
the UV PE plastic in these, these cloudy Nalgene bottles, um, or also your traditional Nalgene bottle has the, made of the number seven plastic, BPA free, of course. Um, and so, yeah, the, the durability and the ability to hold up to sun exposure is one of the reasons I didn't like to use these. What do I use these days as my on the trail, lightweight, but not quite ultralight hydration solution? Well, I like to use a combination of one or two Nalgene bottles of the UV PE variety with, with a large capacity hydration bladder. Um, and so I've already discussed these Nalgene bottles in length. I don't need to do that anymore. So let's get into some of these hydration bladders I use. I, I mostly use this Hydra Peak three liter Seeker hydration bladder. And uh, this thing comes in at 3.2 ounces for three liters. That's pretty good. That, I think that even beats the three liter weight of, of three smart water bottles. So, so take that smart water. Yeah, yeah. So I like this thing. The one thing I don't like is, is this thing can be a little hard to fill it up all the way. And sometimes I'm not able to fill it up all the way to capacity just because, just because, I don't know. It's just like hard to dip it in and get it filled up all the way. I don't know. But that's my only gripe. I haven't had any durability concerns with this. Um, I know some reviews might say it leaks or whatever, but I, I don't, I haven't had that concern. If I want to carry a little more weight, have a little more durability, have multiple ways to, to fill it up and, and, and get water out, I'll have this MSR Dromalite. This is great for groups. Um, you know, maybe just, maybe it's just car camping or whatever. So this thing is a four liter capacity, comes in 5.2 ounces. Uh, that's lighter weight than most of your, your bladders out there. Uh, of course, this doesn't have a tube, but you know I really like this thing. If um if I need a lot of capacity, I'm carrying for multiple people or whatever. And the final thing I might use is this ever ever new 1.5 liter uh, little bladder here, and there's also platypuses like this. And this came in at about 1.3 ounces. So if you carry two of these for a total of three liters, that comes in at 2.6 ounces for. Um, three liters, which is which is even lighter weight than this. But I don't really like to use this for more than day hikes because of durability concerns. And I also don't like water bottles with such a small opening because it's just hard to get water in and out of there and also to clean it and dry it when the time comes. So so I, I only use this if I need a little extra lightweight capacity for a day hike. I don't really like to use it if I'm out for an extended backpack. Well, folks, that's the gist of my video. I just wanted to discuss quickly why I do not prefer to use smart water bottles on the trail and also offer some lightweight but not quite ultralight hydration solutions for other folks uh, like me who may not like to use smart water bottles on the trail. So thanks for watching. You can do the whole like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. I mean, I don't really care because I just make these videos uh, for fun, uh, to entertain myself. So do whatever you want and make sure to stay safe out there and respect the local rules regarding your trails and camping uh, with this coronavirus going around. You don't want to you know, get yourself fined or, or get yourself or other people sick. And also make sure to stay safe during this time in our country in which we're experiencing large scale protests and some of the largest riots since in, in, in almost in over 50 years. Uh, related to the police brutality and killings of, of black Americans. And hopefully we are able to find, come together and find a solution that makes this country a more peaceful and safe place for everyone who lives here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.